to give him B zero one zero one in the in the busted uh, Trinidadian in the busted Trinidadian in the mo the model. No, I don't understand. And the, uh, we received the assignment, as you know, we received the assignment. Yes, mm -hmm. and we. When we when we, we try to walk, when we try to walk or get the receipt, we did not find B0101 and give him B0101. And the model did not accept it to send seven, send seven, or did not accept it, the Microsoft Excel seven. Okay, I think uh, probably I did not enable Excel, uh, Excel spreadsheet to be accepted. So what I will do, I'm going to go back there, adjust it. I don't want everything to be smooth. So bring all this problem in so that I will go back and adjust and see if it will accept. If it will accept, just send me what's up and tell me, yes, it will accept. But I don't want to do it now that we have classes. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let's, uh, let me look at this chapter. Chapter two, let me see if I can. Everybody still look at my screen? Uh -huh. I just wanted to yes, remind yes, you that you have Okay. Okay, everybody look at the screen, right? Yes, yes, we see. Okay, so this chapter two start with uh, investing and financing. I told you last last class I mentioned something about uh, about co activities where companies make decisions. I said there were three of them. Who can give us those three? Three activities. All companies, no matter how big, no, um, no matter how small, there are three decisions. Uh-huh. Uh, there are three division in uh, financing activities. Yes, financing activities, yes. Investment activities. Investment, very good. Invest investing activities. Uh-huh. Operating, operating activities. Operating, that's very good. So you guys got this thing. So operating activities, you see, those are the activities. So now we'll be looking at uh, each of those activities. So we are now looking at in chapter two. We look at investing and financing these uh, activities. We want to know those transactions? Last time we talked about which of those transactions are financing and which are investing activities. So this chapter two will dig deep into it and tell us what the financing activities are and what the financing activities and what are the investing activities. So uh, the learning objective is much, but maybe we'll, we'll be running through some of them. So the learning objective here define the key accounting uh, assumptions, principles, and elements related to the balance sheet. Identify what constitute business transaction and recognize common balance sheet accounting title used in business. Apply transaction analysis to simple business transaction in terms of accounting equation. If you recall, we talked about this accounting equation last class, assets equals liability plus stockholders equity. So now uh, you will look at assets. If you recall too, asset is split into two. We have what we call the current uh, assets and then the long-term assets. Liability is the same thing. We have short-term liabilities. Those liabilities to be repaid within 12 months and we have uh, long-term liabilities as well. Anything more than one year is long-term. So then we have the stockholders equity. So we'll look at that. The transactions that will satisfy that equation, determine the impact 2.4, determine the impact of business transaction on the balance sheet. So you can see everything will eventually, all transactions eventually have impact on the balance sheet. And we'll be looking at journal entries, the account. If you recall, when we were talking about, uh, when we were talking about credit of $700, I say, yes, we will have two entries. 
So we we'll have two entries. One will be credit to revenue, 700. And then the other one will be debit to account receivable, 700. So this equation will always, you can see, debit my, uh, is, uh, credit is plus and debit is minus. So they cancel out, they're always balanced. So we'll be looking at that, prepare a trial balance and simplify classify balance sheet and analyze company using the current ratio. So you look at current ratio I think, also, and we know current ratio is always measurement of liquidity, current liquidity, that is a current asset divided by current liabilities. So we'll be looking at that, then identify investing and financing transaction and demonstrate how the impact cash flows. So to understand amount appearing on a company's balance sheet. So we have to look at the activities and then how those specific activities affect each of the balance sheets. And for balance sheet, you know, we have, uh, who can tell us the component of balance sheets? Because that is where the transactions will all come or go to. Who can tell Asset us the components? Equal to liabilities plus uh, stockholders equity. Okay, so that means on one side of it, we have assets. Yes, which we, we have, have assets. Uh, current assets and, and long-term assets. Then very good, current assets and long-term assets, and the total will give us total assets. Okay, yes. total asset. And then on the other side, Han, we have, uh, we have liabilities. Liabilities. And then liability is split into current, uh, current liabilities. Current long -term. liability. Okay. Long term okay. liability. And then we Plus have stockholders equity. Then stockholders equity or shareholders equity. And one. So that's very good. So basically, you understand most of those things. So each of the transactions will be spread in that form. One will go to assets or uh, some transactions center on assets. For example, if we if we are paying cash or we are, uh, we are paying cash, so that would be either a credit to cash and we are using it to satisfy a given maybe a long-term asset. So everything will stay on, but then it will be minus plus. So the balance sheet or the uh, or the balancing equation will still be intact. Okay, we define the key accounting assumption principle element related to balance sheet. So the separate assumptions going through all this transaction number one is that we consider a company to be a separate uh, legal entity. That is, that means company's activity this is just like a complete human being. The, com the company can be sued and the company can sue. And then we also look at it as a going concern. Company is, if it's not a going concern, then the, that company is liquidated or is bankrupt. So we consider that, that business is a continuous uh, continuity assumptions. That is a going concern. That is what we mean by going concern. And then all, all transactions must have monetary units. So that is what we call monetary unit assumption. So those are the three assumption. One, separate legal entity. Two, going concern, concern assumptions. And three, monetary units. And then each of those items in the balance sheet is based on historical costs based on historical cost. Let me see. Based on historical cost, each of those transactions in the balance sheet. Historical cost means that if 10 years ago, we bought a, a car for the company, 10,000. So the original cost of that car is 10,000, less depreciation, then we know the unit, we will know the today cost, uh, cost in terms of what we call the book value. So what is available in the balance sheet is what we call the book value of 
that uh, asset. Okay, determine the key accounting we have done. Okay, understanding amount appearing on the company balance sheet. Oh, am I going back? I'm going forward. Okay, okay, I was going back. Okay, you all know the three elements we are looking at here on the balance sheet: assets, liabilities, stockholders, equities. So we know everybody know what liability is. is is there anybody who can define from your own knowledge of what liability is? Who can define liability for us? You don't need to be from the text. Uh, it, uh, in, in my definition, it's money that uh, others need from the company. Okay, so that means, well, very good. It's, it's a money. debt on the company. Uh -huh. It's a debt on the company. Very good. It's a debt on the company. That is what other. That is what the company uh, owe other people outside the business. So these are transactions, past transactions that has resulted to debt. For example, if they come, if the the bank give the company five thousand dollars, and they say, okay, this five thousand, you have to repay us in 10 months. So that will be short-term liability. So liability is what we, what the company owes. Presumably then, they are the accounts payable of the company. Yeah, account payable is what? Liability. It's liability, very good. You're not looking at things ahead of me. Okay, that is also liabilities, yeah. And it is short-term liabilities. Because it may be it may be 30 days, it may be 60 days. That is also under short-term liabilities. Account uh, account payable on end revenue, accrued expenses payable, current lease liabilities and others. Okay, so for non-liabilities, that is half due date beyond one year. That is what we call in most cases long-term liability. Who can give us an example of long-term liabilities? Long-term liability, who can give us example? Debt to a bank. Bank loan. Uh -huh. Bank loan. Yeah, if you say debt to a bank, I don't, we cannot even know what, it is a liability, but is it long-term or short-term? What would make it short-term? What would make it long-term? Short-term short is short -term. less than one year. Uh, the year, the, the, the period. Is more than one year. Okay, so if, uh, if, we, if this company goes to the bank, ABC Limited goes to the bank and asks for the bank to give, say, look, we have a project we are going to finance, and the project will, so will be for five years, that we need a bank loan. The bank will not give them loan and tell them you must repay the loan in 12 months. When they are using it to finance a project that is 12 months, uh, is, uh, is five years. So that will be long-term liability. The bank will say, okay, we'll give you a loan for five years. After five years, you want us to repay us back. So that is what we call long-term liabilities. So now what comes to mind is that because liability section of the balance sheet and asset section, they seem to mirror themselves out. So what really comes to mind is current asset and current liabilities. So what will be the major difference between current asset and current liabilities? Who can answer that question? What is the difference between current asset and current li liabilities? Both the difference of the... mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I go ahead. Current assets uh, are the assets that can be uh, used when, within a year. And current liabilities also the liabilities that should be paid within one year. Very good. So you can see it's good to always look at it that from that angle. Current asset, that means 
funds, cash, in, in short-term investment, all put together become current asset. What you can use within one year to meet current liabilities. So for example, if, if I look at, if we look at this ABC company, current liability is, um, is say $50,000, $50,000. That is current li li current asset. Let me put it this way. Then current liability. If current liability is say twenty five thousand, you can see that the company will be able to pay off current liability and still remain liquid. Compared to a company with current asset is fifty thousand and current liability is fifty thousand. So will the company have enough funds to meet future obligations short term? Professor, I have a question, please. Yeah, I'm or... asking a question first. I mean, a company with short term, long term, short term uh, or current asset, 50,000. Maybe you answer that question. Current asset is 50,000. Current liability is 50,000. Will such company have enough money to meet future Current, current liabilities? I think no. Yeah, the answer would be no, because if you should pay off all the current liability, then it will, will, the company will end up with uh, zero dollars. So you will have no money to meet future financial transactions. Yes, ask a question. Um, my question is uh, if is like uh, the the one we faced in the assignment for for including the notes receivable or the um, the accounts receivables in the in the current assets. So if if the notes receivable or the the accounts receivable receivables were not classified into short term or long term, should I consider a short term and be considered as a current asset or uh, it is included in the assets uh, overall. The test, the test case for every uh, account transaction is the time duration. Time. If the note payable is five years, that will not note payable is five years. That would be that will not be current liabilities. Correct. So that would yeah. be long liability, long-term liability. If the note payable is uh, nine months, nine months from today, note payable where is say uh, 2,000, that is short term. Anything below 12 months, anything uh, 12 months and below, that is uh, what we call short term. So for the asset side, the same measurements, the same uh, decision making. If we have note receivable, and it is nine months. That will fall under current assets. But there are some notes that is 10 years, 20 years, 50 years. So that fall under long-term uh, assets. Did that answer your question? Yes, very clear. Okay. All right, let's look at uh, still element of balance sheet. We have the stock uh, holders equity. If anybody confused with what stockholders' equity is, if there is no questions, I will move. I will, I will be moving like that so that I will move faster. So we know we know who are the the stockholders' equities are the owners of the business. We know that, and they provide the money for the business. Okay. So we look at, okay, this is a typical example of uh, uh, uh Mexican grill incorporation balance sheet. So this is the balance sheet of this company, C, uh, CMGI incorporation. Okay, we call it consolidated uh, balance sheet. Why do we say it's consolidated? Who, who knows? Who knows why we say Uh-huh. 
because it has everything in it. <laughs> it has everything in it. Yeah, that is very that is true too. Every balance has everything in it. Okay, why we say it's consolidated means that this is uh, a parent balance sheet. We have the difference between just like just put, use an idea what we know parents and child, right? The parents and child. The child in this, uh, this is parent of the company. Uh, okay. And then the child there will be what we call the subsidiaries. Subsidiary. So when you see consolidated balance sheet, what come to mind is, oh, okay. This is a very big company. It's a parent company. So it has other subsidiaries. It has other ch children. Did I make myself clear? So we have consolidated balance sheet means they have now gathered all the balance sheet of the children and put it into one readable balance sheet known as consolidated balance sheet. So that's the difference. If you see a company that say balance sheet as, as a December diseases, that means that, that company is not parent. That is just the company. But when you see consolidated means it has so many uh, subsidiaries. Or you can call it branches, so many branches. Some may be within that same country or overseas. So this company, Mexican Grill, has so many branches that may be within Mexico or outside uh, Mexico as well. So in this case, it's very clear. Current asset here, you can see. You can see current asset here is um, is separated. So under current asset, you have the cash, the short-term investment, account receivables, supplies, prepaid expenses. So all that from other current asset. And here, the total asset, the total asset is, uh, total current asset is 10073, 10 zero. So, so in that case, um, the three zeros are omitted. That's why if you see the top of it, it is uh, given the a million of dollars, a millions of dollars. So who can read what, how much cash do we have considering that it is in millions? Who can give us that number? How much cash do we have on that current asset? 481 million. 481. Huh? Yeah? 481, yeah. So that means that is what they have. And then this will be in billions, the total. But in any case, to make our work very simple for us to handle these big figures, they reduce it and eliminate the millions. So that is why we have 481, 481 for account receivable. And then we have suppliers 26, we have prepaid expenses 85, and then the total is 1,073. So now if we look at it too, so if we now look, it's separated. Now we look at, uh, okay. Now we look at total assets. You can see it's 5,000 because we have seen that long-term assets have been separated from, from uh, current, as, current assets. So from here, who can tell us what uh, is, the total assets, if the current asset is 1,073. Who can tell us what the current, uh, what the fixed asset should be? Uh, they are the land building and equipment, which are 2,660. No, I will not put it that way. We have total current asset to be, we have total current asset. Listen carefully. Because if you get some of these basics, then it will be very easy for us to 
to, to know what our counting is all about. If we look at total current asset is 1,073, 1,073. Total assets, total asset is 5,106. Then my question is, if 1,073 is total current asset, what will be long-term asset in this case? And the we shall subtract the... Very good. Somebody has said subtract. Very good. That was what I wanted you to know. Because in the whole five five million five one oh six the the five thousand one hundred and six, the only current asset is one thousand and seventy three. Every other thing there is long term assets. Am I correct? Am I clear? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yes, so yes. if you subtract, if you subtract, because there may be a question, and then they give you this figure, then they ask you, what is the total long-term asset? You say, oh, that is not on the question, or it's not on the balance sheet, it's there. So if you subtract total current asset, what is left is long-term assets. So in that case, the two put together net of depreciation, depreciation is always taken out. So that will become 5,106, 5,106. So that will become the total assets. Mm. Okay, so on the liability and stockholders equity, the same thing. So now we have seen total current liability is what? Total current liability. 667. 667. So we have, so I want you to take note of those two figures. We have total current liability is 1073, and then we have current, no, current asset is 1073. Then we have current liabilities to be 667. I want us to take note of it. If I want to jump ahead, each of every one of you calculate current uh, current ratio of this company current ratio i give you two two minutes calculate what current ratio is of this company we know the current asset we know the current liabilities what is the 406. current huh 406 I mean, current liability of what is the current ratio of this company? A ratio, well, uh, one, hmm? just one minute. Okay. Me too. I'm, I'm going to do my calculations too, so that if you give me the number, if it's not correct, I will say, oh, no. Like the one you gave me. Six, six, seven. Okay. Who have done it? What is current ratio of this company? 0.62, huh? 67 over 1073. Current, current ratio is always a measure of liquidity, which is current asset divided by current liability. Okay. So some of this analysis will be doing it as we go along. My own way, my own way will make it clearer to you. 1.6? 1.6087. Yes. 1.6087. Who can explain what, what current ratio is uh, one point of this company is 1.6087. Uh, what is the meaning of that? I guess that means that the the company assets can cover its liability and we will have a future um, uh, the company can um, can still have uh, a future they are not uh, equal to each other so that will make the company bankrupted or something very good so that means the company have more than enough 
to pay off if they want to, if they say, okay, current liability, they ask us to pay them off. Okay, let's pay them off. The company can pay them off and still have sufficient cash to meet future short-term obligations. That's very good. So that is it. So that is the way we do analysis of uh, accounting and financial statements. So now we know the current ratio, the liquidity position of this company, the current liquidity position of the company. So we know it now that we know that if they are to pay their creditors, they can pay their credit, short-term creditors, I mean, they can pay and they still have a sufficient uh, balance. Okay, you can review all that. This, we have the current liability, current non-current liabilities. You can see everything is grouped. People look at the far right. Look at the far right here. All this is current liabilities. Account payable on end revenue, accrued expenses payable, wages payable, utility payables, current lease liabilities. So these are all current liabilities. And then you have the non, non-current liabilities, note payable. You can see note payable is not non-current liability because it's the, in this case, it's more than one year they are going to pay this off. Then we have other long-term lease liabilities. So that gives us total liabilities. Then we have the stockholders' equities. Stockholders' equity, common stock, additional paid in capital, treasury stock, retained earnings, and then stockholders' equity will be this. So adding this, everything up will now give us the same numbers. If you recall, the total asset was 5,106. Yes, 5,106. So the total liability is the same thing. Okay. Uh, Professor, I have a, I have a question. Yeah? Okay, I'll go back to that slide. Yes, please. Okay, all right. All right, yeah. It's not changed yet. Mm. What is the question? Uh, in, is a stock in... in um, in the balance sheet, in the consolidated balance sheet. Mm. Uh, it says uh, one, uh, it common stock adds uh, one cent. Uh, it's one, do, it's one dollar there. Huh? Mm. 0 0.01 per value. Okay. How, how can we calculate the stock <laughs> value in this case? Okay, the book, the stock value in this book is 0 0.01 per value. It does not have to be the same as the market value. Two different things. Market value is different from the book value of this stock. This stock, this is, the book value is 0 0.01 per stock. So now let's look at 100, 100 stock, 100. 100 stock will be how much? If you multiply you 100. multiply the 100 into uh, $1. 0 0.01, it will be $1. That, will, that is why you say $1. So that means this company has just one. It has 100 stock. But probably in the market, in the market, if you go to the market, you, I hope everybody understand what I mean by going to the stock market because this company is uh, a public company. It's in the market. It's in the US stock market. So, but if you go to the, if you check the stock market now, probably the company stock will be maybe um, $17 for that to pay stock. So you can now see that for this stock now, supposing they are selling it in the market, they will sell it for $17. Did that make myself clear? Yes. Uh, no, okay, they will sell it for $17, but in our in, in the book of the company, what they will do now is that they will split. You say the actual value in our book for this stock market, uh, for this stock is $1. Then there is additional. What is the additional there? The additional is $16, correct? 
So this is this is the, the additional is the difference between the market value and the book value, right? Very good. Yeah, you got it. So in this case, we have seventeen dollars as the market value for this stock, but in the actual uh, stockholders equity, it is just one dollar. Uh, so, uh, 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 professor, when we say per value, uh, mean per one stock? Yeah, per one stock. One stock is zero point zero one dollar. Okay, and so one million equals ten thousand. So if we say uh, one million dollar, it equals ten thousand shares. Yes, that means ten. Yes. No, just what you should know is that how much share do you do you want? If you want, if you yourself sitting there, you want hundred shares to buy. Okay, you are not going to buy. You are not going to pay zero point zero one per share. But in the book, the hundred share you are going to buy will be one hundred multiplied by zero point zero one. Did I make myself clear? Yes. Okay. So 0 0.01, that would be $1, correct? Then I'm assuming, assuming I have not checked the market, current market price for Mexican grill. But the, the current market price should be maybe around between seven, maybe 17 to eight, $20 per share. So now at the same time, how much will you pay for that 100 shares? So you will see that you will pay $17 for the market. Assuming the market share, let me put it a simple one. $1,700. Okay. So you can see the difference will be what we call additional paid in capital. Did I make myself clear? So 100 shares multiplied by 0 0.01 will give you the value on the on this on the books of Mexico. But then how do we account for the difference in terms of the market share, in terms of the market value? We have to separate it between what we call the common stock and additional paid in capital. So two accounts will be involved here. Um, common stock will be affected, additional paid in capital will be affected. Whatever is in excess of the par value of the stock will go to additional paid in capital. Did I make myself clear? Yes. Yeah. Every company is like that. You can go some company, each share may be 50 cents, 0 0.5. But if you go to the market, it will be over $300 per share. So if you are paying, you will pay that market price and then when they come to their books they will now say okay what is the additional paid in capital they separate it from the actual common stock okay Professor, right. please, huh? could, you, could you elaborate what is meant by treasury stock because it is uh, existing in negative in this uh, balance sheet yeah, I, I will not. I, well, I will just mention it a little bit because we are not. We are not going to dive into this. It's not within our scope. Treasury stock has to do with companies managing the market value of their stock. So, if the market value of the stock is say two dollars, get it very clear. And because of some uh, maybe the Poor, poor result, bad information coming from the company, the stock starts falling. The next day you realize that the stock is now $1.80. It moved down to $1.50. In most cases, what the company will do is to buy back their stock. The company will now go to the market. Okay, how many stocks? Let's buy back 100 stock or 1,000 stock. When they buy that 1,000 stock, they will put it in 
treasury stock. You will put it there because they bought, bought it from the market, they put it in the treasury stock there. So that treasury stock may be negative or positive depending on when they upload the, the stock. So in that case, that will stabilize the price of stock because what they have done by creating that treasury stock is causing what we call artificial scarcity of their stock. Artificial scarcity, that means they have created scarcity in the sense that if people keep going to buy the stock, they will not see the stock in the market because they have cleared all their stock from the market. So the price may remain at 50 or start appreciating again in value. That is activity in the activity in the investment section of the company, which is not what we should be supposed to be looking at. But it's good. It's a very good question. It's good to have an idea. Did I make myself clear? Yeah. Uh -huh. Did I make yeah. myself? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's keep going then. All right. We will be moving fast. We are not moving. Okay. We identify what constitutes the business transaction and recognize common balance sheet accounting type to use in business. So that what constitutes business transaction in the balance sheet in most cases. So what finance activity cause changes in the financial statement accounts? So we have what we call the external events, exchange of assets, goods, or services by one party of assets, services, and promises to pay. So we have assets and liability that will be created to affect the balance sheet. So we also have internal events that are not exchanged between businesses and other parties. That is within the internal system, between the internal system of the company. So accounts are used by company to accumulate dollars effect of transaction. The list of all transaction titles and their unique number is called chart of accounts. So if we now list all the accounts that we are going to use in the company, that is what we call chart of accounts. Chart of accounts. So example, cash, inventories, account payable, return earnings. Those are all on that chart of accounts. And you don't need to typically say, okay, I must memorize this because all companies have different names in most cases, even though they are standard, but they have different names. They have a lot of names. They have a lot of chart of account that may be different from company A to company B. So you don't need to memorize. Okay, oh, this is the list. Okay, I'll memorize this. You don't need to memorize it because they are different. It's different for companies to companies. Okay, typical account titles. We have gone through this we have seen this in uh, the balance sheet so you can go through this on your own if, if you feel like you want to dig deep into knowing what each of these are for example you can see the account receivable account with receivable in the title is or are always asset they represent so account receivable like for example company pay sells their goods on credit Prepared expenses is also the same thing. So all this you can go through. The major headings, asset, liability, stockholders, equity, revenue, and expenses. OK, applying transaction analysis to business transaction in terms of accounting equation. So you can see that if you look at assets, equal liability, and stockholders, equity, all transaction will revolve around this accounting equation. So when we come back, let's we'll take some break. Maybe we'll take 10 minute break. So by, by quarter past the time, we come back and continue from a learning objective two, three. We'll be moving faster this time until uh, you pause me to ask questions, all right? So let's take uh, let's take 10 15 minutes okay thank you sir okay thank you all right
and then he needs to mute. He needs to mute and close his screen. <laughs>
Hello? Hello? Hello, sir. Uh, yes, Professor. Uh, Who is uh, Wellington? Hello. Hello, Professor. Yes. Yes, my name is Wellington. Um, it's supposed to be my first class. I'm joining for this semester. Oh, okay. I see you as a guest. Are you a guest? <laughs> well, <laughs> honestly, I have complained this issue to the student affairs, and I don't know why I, my name keeps coming up as a guest. As a guest? <laughs> yes. Honestly, I'm not. Okay. That's okay. You are welcome. Don't worry about it. Thank you very much. But sir, I, I still have one issue, sir. I I still complain about my inability to um uh, post my, my 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 discussion. Okay. You couldn't post it. Yes. I you have to reply. We will, did you click reply? I've, I've, I couldn't even really found that reply button. No, you have to click reply. Look at uh, the question I asked, like for the introduction. You click on reply and then you paste it. Okay, and then you I'll paste. Try. Yeah. Then you you copy you copy what you have written and paste, and then okay. paste and says uh, yes, and then. Uh, I think with that, it should be able to, then you post. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. Yeah. Hope from the, the first introductory class will be open to this last one. Huh? I mean, from the first list, the first, uh, the, the first class, the first discussion, it will be mm. open. Yeah, it should be open, yeah, it should be open. I will look at, I will check it again because I think I didn't put any timeline because we're having problem with the model, but now model seems to be working. So I'm going to post all the, all items and discussion, assignment, everything should be done through the model. All right. All right. Thank you, Professor. Yeah. Professor. Yes. And 
the model there is the problem in the model when you are trying to send the other world to seven uh, Excel. You say there is a problem? Yeah, yeah, in the model. When you when you try to when you try to send or upload the assignment, especially Excel to seven. Yes, I told you that probably I will go maybe the file type is a problem. So I will go and change the file type and put something that is more acceptable so that anything you are posting, any document you are posting will go through. So after this, okay. after this class, I will do that. That will be the first thing I will do. And then the next thing I will try to post all the your lecture uh, materials, so, uh, the ebook, so that you'll be able to have access to the ebook. Okay, do we start? Everybody okay. here? Huh? Any any question? Is there any question one minute? Okay, do we start from where we stop? And we'll be moving very fast because we cannot explain everything in detail. I know this is an MBA class, so I will be running. But you can ask one or okay. two questions as we go so that we can finish. We can get things covered enough. And then every other thing, like I said, I'm always available. I can answer your question anytime you have it. Any issue, any anything you don't understand, yes, you can either WhatsApp me especially, I will be able to respond. Okay. Okay, applying transaction, and then we recall, we remember the the accounting equation, asset equals liability. So those are the in fact every transaction is governed by that uh, equation. Okay, so in most case, questions, if you follow that step you have seen on the screen, you ask what was received and what was given. So then identify the account affected. So when you ask, okay, what is involved here? Okay, we are given goods. So then do we pay cash? If we pay cash, that means cash account is affected. If we, if the if the uh, the vendor pay cash, that means cash account is affected. If the vendor pays, uh, you say, oh no, I won't pay now. When I sell the goods in thirty days, I will pay. That means we are looking at credit. And if we are looking at credit, then we are looking at account receivable. So we must identify the asset account, the liability account, the stockholders account that are affected. So we have to ask that question. And then we have to know what was given. Okay, good, what uh, $700. The last like example we had was given on credit. So that means we are going to debit, uh, we'll debit uh, account receivable, $700 and credit, uh, credit uh, the customer. So that means uh, we credit revenue and the customer is given the goods, $700, and then we debit uh, account receivable, which is assets. And asset is always a debit, and while uh, liability is always in credit. So those are the basic things you should know. And then when account is increasing, that is plus. That means there is a plus. If the account is decreasing, that is a minus. So if we know what was received, what was given, 
and then we are able to verify the accounting balance. That is account asset plus liability and stockholders equity. And then we make sure it is always balanced, then we should be okay. And when you look at assets equals to liability plus stockholders equity, if we look at the if we look at this equation, at times the two transactions that will cancel out maybe all assets or all liability or stockholders equity, or it can be all assets and liability. So that is how the accounting works. Hmm. Okay, let me just do it. Okay. Okay. All right, analyzing. Uh, this complete transaction to illustrate the use of transaction analysis process, let's consider trans transactions of this company that are also common to most business. Okay, assume that uh, Chip Hotel engages in the following events during the first quarter of 2020, the first three months following the balance sheet exhibit 2.1. Account titles are from the balance sheet, all accounts are in million except share data. Okay, so this may be one of those examples we're just trying to illustrate. People to sold 100 additional share of common stock with a par value of $0.01 per share at the market value of 0 0.17 per share. So you can see that uh, if, the, if the market value is 0 0.17, then what the, the person, the investor will be paying what the market says and the market price is 0 0.17. So that would be, so the person will pay $17. The investor will pay $17 for these shares in the market. But when you look at the company, the share, value is 0 0.1. So what is 0 0.1 of, uh, of uh, 100? That would be $1. So that means the, the, the investor has paid excess of $16 because of the market price. So what was received in this case was cash and the cash that was received was $17. Cash is an asset. So now we have cash, $17 an asset. You can look at, look at the down part of this. Cash is an asset, $17 has been received. Nothing was received on common on liabilities. But then the share of 0 0.01 in the book, uh, 100 shares will be just $1. So one dollar now, when you look at one dollar, what is left is sixteen dollars out of the seventeen dollars. So the sixteen goes to additional paid in capital. So if you add this, sixteen plus one will give us seventeen dollars. Any question for this example? Anybody has a question? No? Okay. Okay, this is another one. The company borrowed four dollars from its local bank, signing a note to be paid in three years. Is that long term or short term liability? Who can answer that? Long term. It's it's long, long term. term. You can equally see there. I know it was there. You said non current liability. Yes, it's non current liability and is under financing activities because it has to do with money. So it's uh, take, uh, borrow, uh, taking loan or borrowing money. So that is financing activity. It's not investing, it's not operating. This is financing activities. So in that case, 
the bank gave them four thousand four dollar loan. That is cash. So cash account is affected. What again is affected? Who knows? You can see any given transaction, two two accounts must be affected. Who know what else Absolutely. is affected? Huh? Current account. Current. Current account. Uh, current account. That is account there. In the that is for the com for the bank. But for the company, there are two accounts affected because they gave them four dollar cash. So cash account is one of the accounts that is affected. And because it is notes, so note payable is affected, which is a long term liability because it's going to be repaid in three years. So if we look down, look down here, if we look down, you see asset four dollars, note payable four dollars. So you can see. Assets and liability was affected in this case. So always assets and liability will always balance. Cash was received $4 and that liability was increased by $4. So, <clears throat> yes, any question? No, okay. Okay, let's look at another transaction. The company purchased for cash $26 in new equipment. We are using small numbers and our illustration is small numbers so that it will be easy for you to understand. You will know that buying a new equipment, there's no equipment for a factory equipment that will cost $26, maybe 26 million. But let's forget about all the millions. Let's look at the numbers. So we use those numbers to illustrate. So if the company purchased cash $26 in new equipment, $5 in additional intangible asset. So that would be an investing activities. So you can see, so will there be any transaction in the liability side? Any transaction no. in the liability? Huh? No, no. So you can see that everything cash is going to be reduced by $26, right? It's going to be reduced. And then $5 in additional intangible is going to be reduced. So if you add $26 to five, so $31, they're going to reduce it from their cash account, which is which is an asset. So, so minus $31, that will be on the asset side, that is cash. Then still on the asset side, what they are going to is plus 26 equipment and then plus $5 intangible assets. Who knows what an intangible asset is? Yes, sir. Huh? An, intangible, an intangible asset. Yes. For instance, uh, for instance, talking about goodwill. Oh, very trade, good. Trademark. Yes. Trademark, good. Wow. So you guys know this stuff more than, more than your professor. <laughs> That's very good. I'm so proud of you. So intangible assets, these are assets that you cannot even see, but the company will feel it. If you buy goodwill, yes, it will increase the marketing, the product, everything will increase because you are buying goodwill from somebody else. Very, very good. That is a very, very good uh, answer. Okay, so you can see now that uh, after that, you will see that plus five, 26 plus five will give us 31. So you can see balance sheet always balance. Even though liability and stockholders were not affected, but still, the balance sheet balance because 20 plus 26 went to the equipment plus five to intangible assets. Oh my God, it's not working again. Okay. Sorry. 
I, my item got stuck. Okay, where am I, where am I, where am I? Enough, right? so. Okay, let's look at the D, also acquiring $20 in additional land, $40 in new building. All these examples, you can see now that two, two or more accounts may be affected, but then, because our equation of assets and liability will always balance, so that will always balance. I want you to go through some of those examples, and if there is anyone you feel you need to reach out to the professor, you can always read back to me. They are all the same type of transaction, assets and liability. So in summary, transaction analysis involve identifying accounts affected. Account affected and accounts affected cannot be just one account. Every financial transaction, at least two accounts, two accounts must be affected. Two accounts must be affected. It may be two, it may be three, it may be four, it may be five, maybe multiple accounts, but as far as that transaction, you have to identify those accounts affected. And in the first, in the second place, you must know what is given. What is given? What is given? Shares, 100 shares were given. And what did the investor do? The investor pay cash for it. So you can see cash account is affected. And then uh, stockholders equity is also affected. So at least there must be two accounts, at least two accounts, not one. If it is one account, the, the balance sheet will not balance. So if, like I keep saying the same thing, if all accounts and, and effects are correct, if you get them correctly, you have identified all the accounts, you have also put all the value as it is. Is. If you remember the last one we did, the multiple accounts, you credit, uh, you increase the equipment, intangible assets. So those, those were two accounts. There may be more, but when you add everything up, the total of $31 was taken. So that balanced our equation. So if all the, the accounts and effect are correct, then the fundamental accounting equation, asset equals liability plus stockholders equity will remain in balance. So, so in most cases, you have to practice this. It's not by me going through it, um, each transaction and tell you, okay, this is what is involved. You have to practice, do the practice and practice made perfect, you should be able to get it. Uh, excuse me, Professor. Yeah, go ahead. So when we put down all the transactions, hmm. okay, the sheet will be name what? Transactions sheet or consolidated balance sheet? Well, you would, let's not look at consolidated. Consolidated balance sheet is, when we have done, okay, supposing we have, we have uh, three branches, company A. Okay, I, I get your point. I, so, so as you said, let's remove consolidated because consolidated is uh, a group of, of all the branches. So <laughs> I'm talking about the, trans the transactions that we did, okay? Like we bought assets for cash uh, uh, or uh, assets for liabilities. When we write down all these transactions. Okay. Yeah, the transactions will all appear in the journal entries which we are going to look at now and the T accounts. So you write all the journal entries and then you will now uh, deal with individual accounts. For example, okay. cash. Cash is affected, we, supposing we collected, okay, cash is affected, we are going to debit cash $31. Cash is affected, we are going to debit cash 
No, this is this is not my question. Okay, what is the question? What is the name of the sheet? Transaction sheet? sheet? Like, would we put down all the trans the transactions happened? Okay, we call the, we call it journal the um, T accounts where we are going to list all these transactions because there may be millions uh, of transactions depending on the size of the company. Okay. And each of those entries are journal entries. So it is journal entries. Journal entries. Okay. Entries of entries means transactions. Each of those okay. transactions are journal entry. You enter okay. the journal entry and then you create your T account. And then from there, we post it to different ledgers. Okay, because uh, what I'm saying is we have uh, the, four, the uh, four major uh, sheets, like balance sheet, cash flow sheet, uh, uh, income sheet. Okay, mm -hmm. so when we write down all these transactions, it is called uh, at a journal uh, sheet or journal transaction sheet. Yeah, eventually, yeah, you will write them down, but eventually they will be those accounts will be will, they will end up in those accounts. They will end up when you prepare your journal, uh, the your journal entries of all the, of the T accounts. The T account is just capturing. You list this account. Was it a debit or a credit? Okay, this is a twenty-six dollar credit. Then you the next account oh, is debit. You put it on the debit side, and then at the end of it, they will all agree. Okay, no, they will all you. agree. And when they agree, then you have done your work, your job. But you see, most of this transaction is good. You have this background knowledge. Computer do all these things these days. But then, for you to be a good financial manager, you need to have a good knowledge of what is happening. And in most cases, we say what is happening, the theory behind the numbers. The theory behind the number. Don't like when we're doing, we say what is the current ratio of that company. You can see that we're able to extract that those if the two information, calculate the current ratio based on the current ratio and based on the theory we know so far, we know what those numbers are. Did I make myself clear? Yes. Any yes. question? Any question? Uh, prof, no? Um, prof, sir. Uh -huh. Okay, um, I think you are clear enough. No? Oh, okay, all right. Yes. I want us to, uh, because sir, of this. Yes. But, sir, I think the last uh, colleague, his question, I think we are not there yet. He's talking about balance sheet, but we are not <laughs> Yeah, there. we are not there yet. But the point yeah, is that if, don't be confused with the four basic uh, accounting statements. All these journal entries and T account we are talking about, they will affect those four, they will affect those accounts, four accounts, balance sheets, income statements, Cash, uh, cash account, cash flow statements, and uh, and uh, stockholders equity. All the journal entry will affect you. You've seen it now that uh, we're able to credit cash in this case, credit uh, liability or credit stockholders equity or, or or vice versa. So in most cases, they will be affected. Okay, to handle more multitude of daily transactions that a business generates, so we we must establish accounting system. Usually, like I said, I mentioned it, this system is computerized, but you need to know a little bit of the theory behind the numbers so that even if the machine, if there is machine mal malfunction, computer has done a uh, uh, a problem uh, has generated a problem is very easy to know. Like we always say, garbage in, garbage out. If you put wrong information in, computer will also give you that result, wrong re result. So during accounting period analyze. So during the accounting period we are talking about here, 
you must analyze each transaction record entries in the journal. And the entries we are talking about, like I mentioned, they are all the transactions we have just gone through. So then you post each, uh, you post effects to the ledgers. So you see, so when you post, then you prepare what we call the trial balance. So this is the step. Analyze each transaction just like we did. The first thing was the analysis. What is this? Oh, cash, cash was paid out and then we have acquired plants or equipment and we have also purchased uh, goodwill. So all those are transaction you have recognized. And then the next thing is to record those transactions. They are entries. In accounting, we say entries, but they are transactions, either transaction or entries. They are the same thing. But in most cases, we call them entries. Then you post effects on the ledger. After that, the fourth thing is just to prepare the trial balance. If the trial balance don't balance means there was a problem, either misclassification or the value was not correctly stated. So the fit now we adjust the revenue and expenses. So we use item one to four to adjust revenue and expenses. And then we prepare and disseminate financial statement. So as you can see at this point, then we prepare and disseminate financial statement. Like we are we acquire additional equipment. If you recall, the value of that equipment was 26, 26 dollars. My question is: will it affect our financial statement or not? And if it will affect which one? Who can answer the question? Please repeat, Professor. Repeat. I say it will affect. I say, if you recall, we acquire equipment, twenty-six dollar worth of equipment. Will it affect our fin on, on the long run? Will it affect our financial statement or not? If it will affect, which financial statement will be affected? I think it will, it will, uh, it will not affect. Just one yeah. minute. Yes, somebody say it. Somebody yes. outside. Mm. Yes, it will it will affect an effective fin financial balance sheet. It will affect the balance sheet, especially equipment. Oh, very good. So it will affect equipment in the balance sheet you can see by the time we follow through it will affect equipment in the balance sheet and if, by the time we get to the point the fit point here preparing revenue and expenses at the end what we have here are, as the residual of the uh, revenue and expenses will also affect other accounts which are other accounts do you think it would be affected This, you can see some of this question is not on the textbook, but when you get it, you'll be able to know what is happening on the textbook itself. It will affect the cash. No, we have passed through the cash already. We, are, we know we recorded the entries. We have done the journal. When you do the journal entry, that's where you, you post it to different ledger. The cash has been done. Now we have prepared our revenue. Assuming we have finished preparing our revenue. They were then which other financial statements do you think would affect at the end of the revenue circle? Okay, these are wasting our time. Number one, it will affect the cash flow. Uh, well, yes, you will have, yeah, cash flow is one of it. Cash flow statement will be affected. The balance sheet will not be affected because uh, the transactions is happening in the asset side. So there is no liabilities, there is no stockholder. It's cash down, equipment up. All right, balance sheet will be affected because balance sheet is where you have stockholders equity, right? Yes, yes but it we will are be paying... affected because now we are finished income statement. What we are will be left is what we call retained earnings. 
Return earnings will be post to the buy to stockholders equity. And when you post return earnings to stockholders equity, there it will be split into, okay, what do you want to pay for dividend? Dividend is $5. Okay, we are going to, okay, we are going to pay $50 for dividends and the remaining return earnings, we leave it at return earnings, maybe 200 So you can see that it will affect the balance sheet as well. Cash flow will be affected. The balance sheet will be affected. Okay? Yes. All right, let's move on. Okay, how do we com company keep track record? Uh, somebody asked that question, track, uh, track of account balances. General ledger. You can see general ledger is a chronological list of each transaction effect, posts. Then we post to general ledger or the T accounts. So those are the those are the where how we keep track of it. But these days, computer is doing a lot of things for us and make us lazy and make us not to think. But that is why you are in this course. You want to know the numbers, the theory behind the numbers. We know computer do most of these things. Computer do the general ledger, the trial balance for us. So we end up just reading the output from the from the computer. So if you look at it, basic analysis, debit, uh, assets, uh, plus when it is increased, and then minus when it is reduced. And then stockholders equity, common stock, uh, common stock like the 100, uh, 100 stock we sold, in terms of cash, the only uh, credit was one to common stock. And then additional paid in capital takes 16. But if we say common stock and stock additional paid in capital, that was uh, that would be the $17 we derive from the sale of that, the purchase of that 100 stock, the investors purchase. So all these transactions are analyzed in a T account like this. And if you recognize what is given, what is uh, expected, then we should be able to get those transactions right. But in most cases, asset must always be equals to stockholders' equity. So this journal entry, I think we have talked about it a little bit. And look, look at it in terms of the, the stockholders' equity, uh, the additional stock that was purchased. You can look at how... Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me stop it. <laughs> okay. Mm. All right. So if we look at that, we'll just look at that alone and then we flip past the rest of the examples so that we can we can finish most of these things. So here you can see uh sold of hundred additional stock. We all know now the difference between the the market, the the share, the par value, which is the book value on the in, in the books, and then the market value. You can see the par value is this, and the market value is this. And even though you can see the market value is greater than the stock, the book value here, or the par value, at times the par value may be greater than the market value. Who can give us the reason why we we feel that at times the market value may be less than the the par value? Who can give us a very good reason? Because in this case, the market value is more than the is is more than the market value is more than the par value. That is how it's supposed to be. But at times there may be a situation where the par value is 0 0.17 and the market value is down, down, down to 0. Point, say 0 0.09, less than the market value. Who can give us a reason why it can be so? As the company is losing. Yeah, the company is losing. What are they losing? The 
the company is losing, that is correct. What are they losing? Who can act so that you make it perf a perfect answer? He got it. The company is losing, yeah? But what are they losing? What is the problem? Why is the, why is the market value not more than the power value? Some, Sometimes it happens when there is a, a sales in this company. No. When the company decided to... No, you are, you are, go, don't be confused with sales, company, sales of company's product. Sales of company product, yeah, they can give discount, but that may not affect the price of their shares. It may not affect anything, yeah? The company may say, okay, uh, buy one. Could it be, could it be losing, uh, losing because the assets cannot cover the liabilities and the shareholders' equity? Well, that may be that may be a that may be a hidden reason, but that's not okay. The main reason is that um, the company performance overall is not good enough to warrant the share price of uh, zero point one seven. That is why they are going down. Bad news is getting into, is getting outside. We are hearing very bad news about the company. Their shares will not go up. You will get to a point where even the power value will be more uh, will be uh, will be more than the market value. It's supposed to be the other way around. Or at the end of the financial year, the company declare a loss. The share price will go down. Uh, the market value will go down. And if it go down below the, the power value, then even the investors will say, oh, what am I doing here? My money is almost going down up to the point where my money is, is worthless. Okay, so that would be the main reason. So in this case, the market value is good, 0 0.017. So for those of you who bought this share, uh, when the first, originally the, the shares were sold in the market, you bought it probably at zero point the par value at the par value. Now your shares has appreciated to zero point one seven. So on the T account, the way it will be posted is cash. Cash will take the seventeen dollars. But on the credit side, we will split it between common stock. Common stock take the par value because the par value is zero point. Zero one multiply by hundred will just give us hundred dollars. Additional paid in capital, whatever is the difference between the seventeen dollars cash and the common stock value one dollar. The difference is going to what we call additional paid in capital. So in most cases you will see additional paid in capital. That means company stock has been sold more than the par value. All right, posting transactions, just like the transactions we have analyzed. So you can see, this is what we call the general journal. The general journal. So that is how the general journal is. Like I said, most of these things now is handled by computer. So if you look at it here, if you look at it, you will see that um, cash, the general journal for cash has increased by $17. And what is causing the effect? Common stock, $1. Additional stock, 16 Then when you look at the cash itself, the cash balance before that transaction was $481. But now, plus this $17, so that has moved it to $498. So common stock also, you can see the balance of common stock was just one, one dollar. But because of the one dollar additional, he has moved it to one plus one, two. And also additional paid in capital. If you look at their balance sheet, when we check, it was 1466. But because of the additional $16 credit, that has moved it to 1482. So you can see these are how to post journals all the entries 
are captured in this form. But like I said, most of these things now is handled by computer, but it's good for you to know. So you can see all the balances are affected. The cash account is affected by $17 increase. Common stock is affected, is another account, is affected one additional credit dollars, and then the additional paid in capital. So that is where we now look at the T account. So if we look at the T account here, for cash, you can see the beginning balance is 481. So then $17 is added, so that moved the balance to this. And also for common stock, so look at the common stock T account. So all the T account, by the time we consolidate them into one trial uh, balance, then everything, when you, when you capture all these transactions into one trial balance, you will see that everything will balance out. So it's practice. And then another thing is that computer has really taken over most of the job we used to do. Because I know when I was in the bank, we balanced all these things. That was so many years ago. I've worked in the bank before. So we do the balancing ourselves manually. There was no computer. But now with computer, everything seems to be, computer is doing everything for us. But it's good as an MBA graduate for you to know most of these things because you will use them in your own analysis. So also other accounts. So let's see if I see anything that I need to explain again. Let's see. All these are the same thing that we have talked about. Different uh, example we were referring to. I want you to go through it at your time. So we don't need to look at it again. So let's move to prepare a trial balance and simplified classify balance sheet and analyze a company using current ratio. So if we look at the trial balance, so you can see the trial balance here for this very company. You will see that each transaction will be captured. And you capture anyone that is debit goes to uh, stay with debit. Account receivable is debit, is stay in debit. Prepared expenses. This is the final trial balance we have. So everything that was a debit, you have to put it under the debit side. Everything on the credit, you put it under the credit side. And then and the end of it is if these numbers don't agree, that means whatever we were doing, the classification of accounts, the entries, there may be errors. In those days, we used to review all this. When we put all this account down and we don't have this balance agree, the credit side agreed to the debit side, we have to go back and start checking each of those accounts one by one. So in those days, we do it. But computer these days will tell you what is wrong. It will tell you, oh, okay, you recorded this number wrong. So go and check this number and correct. Because the number, computer will produce this for us. But in those days when we, everything was done manually, you see that this, uh, this total, this total definitely uh, we will have to agree and make sure he agrees. It's an error may still exist if the wrong account or the account were used in the journal entries. So if the classification is wrong and the value you picked is wrong, then it will lead to wrong balances. Then you have to agree. We have to work manually until we make sure those balances agree. Okay, balance sheet is prepared from the trial balance. So that is now you got trial balance, you can prepare a balance sheet. Because as soon as everything is balanced, if everything is balanced, what will be what will you do next? Who can tell us what you do since we are going to prepare mm -hmm. balance sheet? If everything is balanced, we have done the balance sheet, the trial balance, everything is balanced. We have seen that everything is balanced. Now we want to prepare balance sheet. 
What do we do? We write it down. I mean, what do we write down? Is the totals. So now we want to prepare the balance sheet. The first thing you will do is for you to write the title, the title of the balance sheet. The title of the balance sheet. A, B, C, if it is for A, B, C, let me tell you, say A, B, C, limited. Okay, that would be, then the balance sheet as had so, so, and so date. Balance sheet as had so, so date. So in that case, that's uh, what- The heading is a heading. Is a heading. You are correct, the heading. Mm -hmm, the heading. So in, the, so in this case, it will be the, the company name, uh, mm -hmm. and we, may, we, we write classified balance sheet or just balance sheet? No, you are right uh, balance sheet. If it is consolidated balance sheet, you say consolidated. So now we are classifying the balance sheet. When we say classifying the balance sheet, what we're actually saying is that you now segregate them between assets and liabilities. And, and in uh, assets, we mentioned what kind of assets, right? Either cash, yes. land, equipment. Yes. On the, okay, I will say assets. Under assets, you start with current assets, right? Current assets, what are they? I know cash is one of them. Short-term investment is another one. You keep going, inventory uh, and so forth and so forth. Uh, uh, prepared expenses, all that form under current asset. You list it and then you put total current asset, then you list. It's from that trial balance because it is balanced that you just pick it, you just copy it. You don't need to do anything other than you know what balance sheet needs. What is under current asset, you put it under current, then what is under long-term asset, you put it under long-term, then you put the total asset, you go to the liabilities, liability and stockholders, equity side, you do the same thing. So you have to segregate now, you pick the asset, you pick the liability, and then at the end, after running the total down, you should they should all balance. So in that case, now, for example, we are working on uh, the 20, uh, December 31st, 2021. We also now use it to compare 20, uh, December 31, 2020, because we want to know. That's what we call comparative data analysis. I want to know what is what is different and why is it different. And in most cases, we use maybe you, you use what we call common size. Common size analysis. Common size. So we use common size to determine, to compare, do comparative analysis of balance sheet as at uh, December 2021 and balance sheet as at December 2020. Any question? So we have it here. So you can see now, this is the balance sheet as at uh, 2020, and that is how it is done. Consolidated balance sheet as at 2020 and, 20, and 2019. Don't be confused with the consolidated. I think I've explained that. You now know what consolidated balance sheet is. That means this company has branches, some other branches, and usually at the end of the financial year, they will call all the branches to send in their balance sheet. They will send in their balance sheet. So the company A will say, okay, balance sheet A1, A2, A3, and so forth. All the branches will send their balance sheet, and then they will consolidate. For cash, they will add all the cash on the balance sheet of the subsidiaries and hey, add it. Yes. What is the difference between consolidated balance sheet and classified balance sheet? Classification is where, where we do the classification and post and move the items according to where we should place the items. We are classifying that balance sheet. That is one. 
um, consolidated. We are now we have classified the balance sheet. Every branches have done it. They classified the balance sheet based on our company's uh, policy. Cash has gone to cash. Short term investment has gone to short term. Account receivable to account. So balance sheet has been totally classified. Everything is okay and it is balanced. They will now those branches send it to the uh, to the parent company. And what will the parent company do? They will now consolidate those balance those balances. Did I make myself clear? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because like for let me see a company that has three branches, cash. Let's say cash. The parent, the company itself, that is A. Probably their balance is cash is 50. Um, company um, A1, the branch A1, the balance is say $20, A2, $30. And then um, then A3 is maybe uh, $15. So for consolidated cash on the balance sheet, on consolidated balance sheet, what they will be reporting on that cash will be 50 plus 20 plus 30 plus 15. So that will be $115. So parent company balance sheet without consolidation, the cash is 50 on the asset side, current asset, their cash is 50. Then A1 is one of the branches, their cash is $20. So that would be what will appear on their, their balance sheet. But when you add all this, you have a consolidated balance sheet figure, which is 115. In that case, at the end of it, we have our consolidated balance sheet for Shipotle Mexican Grill Incorporation. Is that okay? Any questions? Yes. Okay, let's move on. Okay, this is still the, this is the liability side also. You can see the asset has balanced to five for 2020. We have 5,140 for total asset. Also here we have uh, on 2019, we have 5,106. So we can be able to compare the two balance sheets and see what is going on. So now we now look at the liability and stockholders equity side right down also. You can see too, the same balances has appeared. So everything is balanced. So this is the consolidated balance sheet of this company. So that is the consolidated balance sheet of the company for 20 and 2019. All right, so I, I think last class we mentioned uh, GAAP and uh, an international financial reporting standard. And I told you that, yes, these two standards, they have been trying for so many years now to bring the standard uh, to the same par. Everything should be clear, but then there's still, there are still some differences. So IF, IFRS is the International Financial Reporting Standard. It uses They use the same system of analysis, recording, summarizing the results, business activities as GAAP. But they still have some differences. If you look at GAAP, see the GAAP. Who still remember what GAAP stands for? Who still remember what GAAP stands for? GAP. Yes. Okay. General General Account. Generally, Generally accepted. accepted accounting principles. Very good. Okay. So, so this is in I IFRS is international standard. Everything is governed by the same accounting, double accounting transaction, debit, credit, and so forth. But this their reporting is slightly different, the financial statement, balance sheet order. So let's look at the balance sheet order. 
both start with the same assets, but how, how did GAP classify their own? For GAP, they call it current assets. We have been working with GAP uh, st uh, reporting standard, current asset and non-current asset. You see, they put current asset first, non-current asset the second. But look at IF, uh, IFRS, non-current asset first and then current asset second. So if I tell you to prepare account based on IFRS, prepare um, balance sheet based on IFRS. So I expect you to put it in this form for me because that is the form they recognize. But for GAP, they start with current, then non-current. Liabilities, current, then non-current, then stockholders equity. But look at it, look at uh, IFRS. They start with, um, instead of starting with current liability, they start with stockholders equity, liabilities, and non-current, and then current. So GAP, they are reasoning behind this. I may not know exactly the reasoning behind that, uh, but for GAP, the reason behind this is that let's start with the least, the most liquid of our assets. Which one is the most liquid? Which one is the most liquid of our assets? Cash. Huh? Cash. Cash, yes. Let's start with that. Everybody want, we are interested to see the most liquid, but in F, uh, IFRS, they start with non-cash, but everything leads to the same conclusion eventually. And then here, we put stockholders equity last in GAP. They did themselves put it first. So it depending on, uh, like I said, they are still working on, because they have already done a lot of, analysis integrating IFRS and GAP together. They are still working on it to perfect so that at the end of it all, everything will appear the same. There will be no difference between international financial reporting standards and GAP. Yes, somebody ought to ask question. Okay, with this we did, if you remember, I said, note current asset, current liability, current ratio. Does the company have short-term resources to pay a short-term debt? You see, you can now answer this question with 100% uh, um, with amount of uh, certainty that yes, they have. So, and in most cases, yes, they always compare it over time. They compare it over time. Look at... Uh, Look at the company, 2017, their current ratio was 1.9, 18, 1.8, 19, 1.609. Who can tell us what the trend is here? They are losing. Are they losing? Yes. They are not losing because this has to do, it has, it has to do with current asset and current liabilities. That means they are, become, they are becoming less liquid. If we look at short-term liabilities, okay. they are becoming less liquid. So we want to know. So if you, as an MBA uh, graduate, you want to know what is, what is causing this downward trend in current ratio. We want to know that. Don't you see? Nine, 1.9, almost two, almost two for one. 1 1.9 means almost two for every one dollar liability, there is a two dollar asset to take care of it. That is what this one means. But it keeps sliding down until it slides to 2019, we have 1.0, uh, 1.609. And look at, Compare it to other companies in the same business, 2019 and 2019. Grail current ratio is 1.609. Look at this company, 0 
who can explain that the current ratio of this company? What is the implication of 0 0.334? Yes. <clears throat> so the implication here, um, Mexican Grill Incorporated Company uh, is more liquid compared to um, El Polo Local Holdings. It means that the ratio, the ratio of um, 0 0.33 here, mm. um, the, the amount of liquidity, uh, amount of money at their disposal to settle their liabilities is low. So, of course, this company will certainly go uh, bankruptcy because the industrial norm is that um, the the current ratio should be between 2.2 is to one ratio. So compared to this, it's below industrial standard. Okay, that's I good. Think. Very, very good explanation. I, I like that explanation. Yeah, you can see 0 0.3 means in terms, when we start in terms of numbers, that means they have too much current liabilities, very little current assets. Too much current liability. That is, I'm talking about, um, I'm talking about Air Polio local holding. You can see they have too much current liabilities. So if this, if the current liability creditors down say, oh, please pay us back our money. We don't want to do business with you. They don't even have enough to pay. So also, but that of Shark, uh, Shake Shark, at least the thing is a bit uh, better than that of, uh, that of uh, uh, that of uh, yeah, El Polio, because I only zero point eight eight two, almost one for one, but it's still not comfortable. If they pay all their current liabilities, they will not have anything. They will not even be able to pay all. It will remain small, but then they, there is no way they will have short term current assets to operate. So that is good uh, analysis. I like the answers you gave. Okay, also definitely investment and financial transaction impact uh, cash flow, impact for cash flow. So we did a very good example, investing on equipment. You can see buying equipment 26 will impact negatively on the cash flow because you are taking money and paying for that equipment money get money is going out of the system financing too yes we will have impact on cash flow for example we took uh, the company took a loan of four dollars four dollars will be positive to the cash flow because it will be positive because money is coming into the into the company So the same focus of analysis, you will look at it on your own. And in most cases, yeah, what I will point out here is that you can see we always put zero with, with uh, O, operating, operating um, decision, uh, I investing, F is financing. Then you can use it to analyze what is going on on cash and those transactions we did in the past. I want you to look at that on your own when you have time. Okay, that thing, that is it, okay. So that would be uh, it for um, chapter two. I will define the questions we are going there. And I posted, um, I think I posted an assignment of chapter two. I will tell you which one to follow. Everything is based on what this presentation and is based on what we have already discussed, discussed in this class. So I will tell you which one is involved. So we can take a break, maybe another 10 minutes break. And then when we come, we see we can do something about operating, I think, uh, is it financing activities or operating on chapter three? Yes. Yeah, operating. So we just quickly run through operating and when you come back, say so you can take uh, another 15 minutes and come back maybe uh, 
35 minutes to 15 minutes. Okay? okay. Professor, yes. specify your assignment uh, uh, through the team's chat or you shall discuss with us at the, at the end of the lecture. You mean what? Repeat it I mean again. That at the Excel sheet, you, you, Your Excellency said that you, you will specify some problems to solve out for Chapter 2 at the assignment. Yes, yes. I, will, mm -hmm. I will specify which problems and then you see how we can look at those problems before you go. Okay. okay I, want us, I want us to quickly catch up with uh, Chapter 3 so that next, uh, next week we'll be doing Chapter 4 and 5 and then if we can finish Chapter 4 and 5 next week, that means we are now at par with what we are expected to do. So in that case, okay. I, will now, I will take it easy and start going. Okay. Okay. Take the fifteen. Take fifteen minutes and then you come back.
Are we here now, everybody? Yes. Yes, Professor. Okay, right. Okay, you still see my screen? Yes. Okay, so we'll be looking at operating decision and the accounting system. So mainly just uh, what is operating system? system involve operating uh, decisions um, and you know that uh, last time we have talked about it and generally out of the three activities this is the core of all business decision everything is pointing towards operating system operating decisions otherwise if operating decision is not well is not sound is not well made then the company will not be making enough to sustain its business. Their main core decision is based on operating uh, operating uh, decisions. So this is a core, a company that is manufacturing, the operating system, uh, operating decision will be based on manufacture, buy the raw materials, manufacture the finished goods, you should be able to sell, make money, start again, buy raw materials. That becomes the operating life cycle of the business. So that life cycle must be continuous. All, all around is going, you keep going the way it is. Continuously, as far as the company is what we call a going concern. As far as the company is a going concern, that uh, operating uh, Operating a decision must always, always be in play. So we look at, um, let me see, let me see. Okay, good. Okay, um, so learning objective is long, so we'll be running through it quickly, the explanation, and then you go through it in detail when you are doing your study. If there is any question, please, I will tell you I am available 24 hours. If you send me any, any WhatsApp, I will respond to it as soon as I open my WhatsApp. So we are going to describe um, a typical business operating cycle, explain the necessity for the time period assumption. But the typical uh, business operating cycle, uh, cycle is different from industry to industry. Manufacturing this industry is different from that of uh, trading. And if you see that of trading, the operating cycle starts from when they buy the product, when they buy the product, pay, for, pay the vendors, the suppliers, and then they will sell. When they sell, they make money, the circle continues. It's just like a vicious circle, that circle continues. Manufacturing starts from purchase of raw materials and then put the raw materials into semi-finished products, then finished products, then sales. And sales will come in form of either credit sales or cash sales and everything now, the circle continues. So that is, uh, operating circle of, uh, of any given business. It depends on what the business is. And then uh, explain how business activities affect element of the income statement. Explain the accrual basis of accounting and apply the revenue and expense recognition principle. Then apply transaction analysis to examine and record the effect of operating activities on the financial statement. Prepare classified income statement. You can see now we come back again with classified income statement. When you classify income and expenses and put them in the right where they belong, and then compute and interpret the net profit margin ratio. So we have come across one ratio. Don't forget one ratio we come across. That is the current ratio. So here too, we we'll look at uh, net profit margin ratio, very, very important and critical. 
to business. Then identify operating transaction and demonstrate how they affect cash flow. Everything eventually would affect cash flow. Describe a typical business operating cycle and explain the necessity of the time period as I'm I think uh, in a way now, we, you know what we mean by operating cycle. How do business activity affect the income? How this activity recognized and measure? How this activity reported on the income statement? So that is operating cycle, a typical one. So this one, purchase goods and services on credit. Who can tell us what type of business is this? What type of company is this? Is it manufacturing company? Um, it's trading company. Very good. This is trading company. I'm very, I'm very, I am proud of you. Thank you. This is trading company. You can see there is no manufacturing. They don't purchase goods and services. And in most cases, they purchase on credit. So when they purchase on credit, they don't pay until what is agreed. Each company agree on what, when to pay. The company supplying the finished goods, or maybe if it is, uh, if it is a farm, it will be farmers. Farmers, they will tell them, well, we'll pay you in 30 days, in 45 days, in 60 days, depending on what they agree on. So they will purchase on credit. But the next step is that they will pay cash to the suppliers. But the, that is the circle, the typical circle. But that does not imply that when they, when they purchase the goods on credit, they will wait until they pay, uh, they pay the cash before they sell. Both will be happening at the same time, but then this is a unique circle. The next circle will be pay cash to suppliers, those suppliers who supply those uh, goods and services on credit. At that point, they will pay cash. And a typical uh, operating circle for trading companies like there are times, part of it will be paid in on credit, part of it will be paid in cash. So right from that first step here, there may be transactions that involve cash and credit. Then when you move down the circle, those that were on credit supply, they pay the supplier cash and then go sells goods and services to customers. When they sell goods and services to customers, what, did, what happened to them? They receive cash from customers. So in here too, they may sell their own car, their items they have also on credit, partly cash, partly credit. So that's what I want you to know. So it may be cash and credit. If it is cash, yeah, they receive cash. On credit, they will now say, okay, maybe after 30 days, they receive cash and then they go. So in that case, probably I will break this circle here and put uh, 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 credit sales. After sales of goods and services to customer, the next point here should be credit sales. After credit sales, then cash, re ca cash received from customer. And then the circle continues. You can see this circle, probably I'll call it virtual circle of operating circle of, of, of operations. So in that case, it will continue. As soon as this circle is break, that means the company is no more in business, it's not selling, it's not operating. So that is how it is. Okay, operating circle, account, accountant follow the time period as on time, which assume that the long life of the company can be reported in shorter time periods, such as it may be months, Operating circle may be in months, it may be quarters, it may be yearly. But you can see that a manufacturing company will have a longer operating circle than a trading company. For example, if a company is manufacturing, uh, is manufacturing uh, auto vehicles, you should 
one or two vehicle, probably three months, nine months, maybe they are not true, maybe a year. So in that case, operating cycle may, may span across 12 months. Some may have span across two years, depending on when. Some may be quarterly. Within the next quarter, they have, they have complete one operating cycle. So how does it affect element of income? So you see the revenue increase in assets or settlement of liability from major or central ongoing operations. Ongoing operations mainly. When they sell, that revenue will go up and expenses, the expenses they incur as they do the sales. That will decrease, and it will decrease the asset also, decrease liability, and also it will decrease ongoing operating. Because if the, if the revenue sales is $50, $50 and expenses is $20, so it will decrease that revenue by $20. So now income tax, taxable income will be about $30. So also we look at gains gains in assets, increase in assets and settlement of liability from peripheral transactions. So for example, if an asset book value of an asset is $50 and they end up selling that asset $20, that would be a loss, a loss of uh, $30. So that would affect, it will be charged directly to income income statement as a law as a loss it will be a minus and also an asset may be worth thirty dollars um the company sells sells that asset for sixty dollars so there is a gain of ten dollars that will also affect uh, income positively okay so that is a typical uh, consolidated statement of income for the year ended. You can see the difference between balance sheet for the balance sheet as at so, so and so date and balance sheet and income statement for the year ended. So this is measurement of income for a given year. Whereas balance sheet, as I said, always say is a snapshot of what the financial position of the company is. So if you look at it here, you can see this is operating uh, section, operating section, central focus of the business. This is the central focus of the business. So right from restaurant sales revenue to expenses. So these are the expenses, the revenue. This is the core of their business the central focus of their business. Then we have other items section, which is not central focus, like interest revenue, interest expense. Where is this one coming from? Interest revenue and interest expense, who can explain? Who can explain that? Income, yeah. Business uh, that is interest revenue and uh, interest expense. Who can explain it to us? Loans. Yes. Go ahead. Interest expense is from loans that they get from other uh, banks or something, Very and good. interest revenue can be uh, from uh, maybe they. Uh, loaned another company so oh very good i am so much uh, in agreement with your explanation interest revenue come from short-term investment short-term investment of the company company like this mexican grills what they know is about restaurant they they prepare food and sell so they don't have business in investment of uh, in the stock market or what have you. 
but I will give you a typical example. Supposing the financial manager of the company, probably they have 100 million cash. They don't know, they don't have anything to do with it now. And they say, oh, this 100 million, we'll be using it, we'll be using this money, say in, uh, uh, say in 10 months, in 10 months. So what do you think they will do with that 100, 100 million now? Will they put it, put it under the, their pillow and say, okay, let the money be there, sit down there and wait until we need it. Who can tell us what they will do with that 100 million since they can't use it for anything? They don't have immediate plan for it. They only have they plans buy, for seven months. Huh? Uh -huh. They can buy stocks in another company. Very good. In most cases, a real accountant or financial manager will say, okay, we have this 100 million and we can't use this money until November. So between now and November, why don't we go to the to the market and buy stock that traded stock? I don't mean stock that you will not be able to sell. You buy stock like Apple stock, Apple. Then they will buy stock of Apple for that 100 million and keep. At the end, they can sell it or they can look at another, another company may approach them and say, oh, okay, you say you have 100 million. Why don't you give us short term for three months or six months? Okay, you are going to pay me 10% of it as interest. So if the company is to pay 10%, you can see that they will pay them 10 million for, for the period. Let me assume, I'm not making an assumption. So that interest income will be, re will be reported as revenue under other items, interest revenue here. Then the interest expense is as a result of the loan they took from the bank or from anybody or from any investor, creditor. They took money from the, the creditor. The creditor said, this is how much we are going to pay. So that will appear as interest expense. You can see we put parentheses, we put in parentheses because it's a minus. Everything here is positive except this for now. So, Excellent, Mr. Professor. Yes. Um, in case the company invests, as you said, 100 million in stocks for another company, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, after certain time, they sell these uh, stocks and they, they get, uh, what do you say, revenue. They, they buy shares for 100 million and when they sell it, it is 110. Yes. Okay. So the 10 is, as you mentioned, uh, interest revenue, right? Yes. Okay. The what 10, will that one will be, it will be reported as a revenue other items. It may not be exactly interest, but then I'm just using a simple illustration so that you know what it is. Uh, okay. We can create, the, listen, we can create another column here and call it, um, revenue from short-term investment. That's still acceptable. But because it's under other items, so you add that, that become an addition. So supposing they give, instead of the 100 million being invested in the stock market, they invested in, uh, they, they give it out to another company as loan. That, well, we reported that interest revenue, but the most important thing, these are revenue from other items other than the core operation of the company, other than the core operation of the company. Okay, so basically the, the interest revenue is coming from loans. It's coming from? From loans, yeah, right? It, well, it may come from loan, but the point is that that is not the core of their business. The most important thing is that it is separated from it is separated from the core of the business. It may I come from loan, this. yes. I it may come in form of loan. Huh? I understand this. My question okay. here is, what if they cannot, I mean, uh, the, the other uh, entity that borrowed money from them mm -hmm. cannot return yeah. this money? 
<laughs> not only return the assets, so not only return the interest or pay the interest, they cannot uh -huh. return the actual money. This is the loss for Chipotle, for example, right? Because they made a bad investment. Very good. I'm happy. I'm very, very happy. I'm proud of you. You said that they made a bad investment. And even going to the stock market to make revenue because of the short period, you don't need the 100 million. You say, okay, let's jump into the stock market. What if you jump into the stock market, you buy uh, Apple share, 100 million. And by the time you need the, the money, Apple shares has fallen down to 98 million. You have lost 2 exactly. million, correct? So what will happen in this case? It's, it's a loss. Yeah, it will be a loss. It will impact on your, your you, you are the, the financial manager of the company. It will impact on your income statement. You will go under other items and put loss from loss from short-term investment. You put bracket there, two million. So in that case, if we have lost two million from that investment, we have we made revenue interest 17 million then 2 million we put there minus 2 million so instead of making it so that means the difference between 17 and 2 and 3 that would be 12 million but in this case now it's 14 million the difference when you net interest expense from interest revenue we have 14 million there but if you now went and made bad investment as a financial manager of this company yes you put it there yeah the stockholders will come after you and ask you, why did you make this investment when you know the investment would be bad? You said, no, I didn't know. I saw uh, this company. Uh, huh? So uh, in this case, if if Chihutil makes 10, they need 100 million after 10 months. And they ended up with 98 million. This will affect their operations itself. No, it will not affect. Remember the analogy. And the, the, the example we are saying, they have 100 million today. Which and they will need after 10 months. They will need to invest, they will need that money after 10 months. So if they don't, if they sit down, if you sit down as a financial manager, you say you do nothing. One, because you are afraid that they ah, No, I'm afraid I won't invest. Then you are not a financial manager. Financial manager, you have to take risk and you have to look at the risk and you look at possible remedy to see if you will be able to make some money out of it. Even though you won't make money, the best decision is for you to leave the money where it is. It's better for us to keep the 100 million today than for us to say invest in there tomorrow. Oh, the, the stock market went down, so it's 95 million. The stockholder, the owner of the business will come after you. And if you have to cause them now to lose 5 million, Probably that will cost you your job as well. Yes. Huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it will cost you your job. They will say, Why well, are you a financial manager if you don't know where to invest our money? So you go away. Let's look for a better financial manager. So that will be the case. So, in any case, we should not overdwell too much on it. Uh, other items will be reported there. And then from there, we arrive at what we call income before income tax income before income tax i know in uh which country are you from the, the last person Kuwait. Kuwait. Huh? we don't have taxes Kuwait, uh -huh. don't have tax. no tax. Uh, what do you call it is this zaka you pay or what no uh, zaka is related to um uh, to religion to muslims Okay, which is a, a certain uh, percentage every year from uh, a solid month. Let's say you had hundred thousand uh, uh, dollars with you, and they mm -hmm. stayed the same for one year. Then okay. you have to pay a certain percentage for that, uh, so like that is, one percent or that. one in a one one in a thousand. Okay, well then how do you what do you how do you account for zaka if this is this is a Mexico, Mexican company is operating there. They have made, uh, like now, they have made over uh, 444 million. Over 
144 million dollars. So how do you account for uh, that is coming to net income now 458 million? You it's, know it's you don't want them it. to go. So how do you how do you account for Zaka in this case? Uh, it's it's not about it's not about the revenue. It's about the Capital. amount of money okay mm. remaining the same. Oh, the so money you started the you started with 100,000 you ended up with 200. Okay, you are paying for the hundred thousand. Okay. 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 So the set, the following year you started okay. with a two hundred. Okay, mm. and you ended up with one hundred and fifty. You lost. So you do, you pay the care for one fifty, not two hundred. Okay. So that, that means that you are looking. So for your own case, that means for Zaka, we are looking at the capital uh, employed in the business. Uh, yes, correct. Okay, so that means on the balance sheet now, our total capital there, stockholders' equities, is say uh, five million. So at the end of the year, if they say, "Oh, we made a lot of money in income," so now our capital has increased from um, five million to seven million. So you have to pay Zaka for the two million, correct? No, for the five million. Oh, you pay for the five million? Yes, for the for the original. Wow. For the so... amount that continued with you untouched or not changed, not reduced in one year. So what of the two million? Two million, that's your 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 revenue. Okay. You you don't pay the care for that, you pay uh Sadaka. This is voluntary. Okay. okay? But I... If you add the two million to the five, so you have seven. So you started the second year with seven. Okay. I okay. hope I hope you guys will be able to compare the MBA financial, what you are learning, and the, the Muslim side of it and be able to extract. Maybe I will come up with one question later on as we progress. Because there are so many things that is like now, I'm talking to you about income tax. It may not be applicable to you, but then for a standard international accounting, you have to know that there is an income tax. This company income tax should be 20%, uh, 30%. So they will calculate 30% and subtract. So let everybody check what this is. This is Income tax expense for this company is 108 million. So can we calculate 30% of 458? What is it? Who got the answer? 458 multiplied by 30%. Who got the answer? 108. Okay, so you can see it is standard and that is how it should be. 30% of income statement and that's it. So, for your own case, you, I want you guys to now look at how do we account what we pay back to the government because income tax is expense is what we pay back to the government. For doing business in this country, you have to pay a certain amount. So, I know you have Zaka. Zaka has nothing to do with our income statement. So, you tell me how you treat it when you come next week before we do we go into discussion i want us to discuss how you handle income statement and what you are able to how you be able to compare it to what you do with the government because i know that you cannot just go in the do business and take all the money away so if I, if that is the case then some of us will come there do business make uh, 458 million and then we say, okay, bye. I made 458, I'm not giving you a thing. So I want you to come up with something. Let me know how you treat it. I have a, bit, a little bit of idea, apart from Zaka, I have a little bit of idea. So when you come, I want us to discuss that next week. So now we don't have much, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Zaka is for individuals, not as a company. Okay, for company, what is it? 
I I believe because because I am here in Kuwait as an employee. I'm not an, a business owner. Okay. Uh -huh. I I think I think there is some certain tax for companies. <laughs> but okay, I was not involved don't, in don't, that. Don't say it. Don't say it now. Next week, the first the first 10, 15 minutes, we have to compare. We have to. I want us to be able to to link the treatment of income tax and statement of income to what you do in your country. Because why you are why you are in an MBA, you want to be in a you want to acquire knowledge so that you go back to your country and see what you are doing and then marry it to what you learn and then try to improve on improve your system. So that is what that is why we are here. So we'll leave it as it is. We couldn't uh, go beyond uh, uh, unit 10. We'll, you go through it until it is just 45 slides. So go through it and uh, when you come or, or, you are, or as you go along, if you have any questions, you ask me because these are all the things I've discussed a lot because you can see I talk too much maybe. So you will see that it's 49 slides Finish your 39 slide. If you have any question within the week, you call me. And then for the assignment, we have, uh, I think I, if I didn't post the assignment, I'll look at it and post the assignment. And another, another responsibility I have is to post all the e-books so that you have them. That is what I'm going to do between now and Monday to make sure everything we are now in line with the way we should handle this course. I will also post discussion for, for chapter three. So you will see discussion, go to the discussion, uh, look at the question and then click on the, on reply and post, copy and paste on your reply. Some people ask me, oh, how do I uh, upload? You don't upload anything. Copy and paste on the reply. And then you go back to what you are, your colleagues have posted. Look at what they have posted, respond, and be very kind. Respond positively, or if you want to suggest, oh, maybe you miss this or miss this, be polite enough to respond to two of your classmates' posts. I know that will give you points. So discussion will be part of the graded assignment. So I'm going to create because now what we have here on my on my book on my syllabus is quiz one, quiz two, and then final exam. I'm going to reduce quiz one. Homework assignment is hundred point. And quiz one and two, I will reduce it. I will reduce it and put discussion so that anytime you discuss and you respond, I'll give you credit and then I'll post it to the to the grade book. So other uh, than sir, can that, I have a question? Yes, go ahead. Ask your question. Uh, sir, in the discussion, uh, is it all about in the books or it's the way we understand? The discussion is based on when you read your text, you read what we are doing today. So your discussion should be centered around what you know using your own language. And that is what I mean language, you are English. So you should yeah. not go and say, oh, let me go and copy from uh, the test book. Read, understand what we are doing, and then post accordingly. Post what you know. Whether you are right or wrong, post the way you know it. That is why we are putting the discussion. I'll be going to individual discussion now, from now on, and uh, comment on most of the postings. I just wanted the uh, I wanted uh, the module to be working very well. Then I will be able to put what I'm expected for you to do. Uh, got it, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right. You, sir. Good luck. And uh, I will be able to be reviewing what you are doing. I will post what most of the things, check the, the module as much as possible. You have any question, please always feel free. Ask me. 24 hours, I'm always here to answer your question and give, and give you all the support that I can give. Okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, sir. All right.
talk to you again. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.